Welcome class. Today we are going to be going over the microscope, which is exercise one in your lab manual. So we are going to briefly talk about our microscopes, a uh, couple equations that are in your lab manual, and then we're going to go over the parts of the microscope. And I will go over how to focus the microscope. So um, I'll demonstrate that process for you. That way you will know how to uh, work our microscopes. Uh, so the microscopes that we have in our class are the compound light microscopes. So that means they have two lenses and they are using light to illuminate the specimen. So these microscopes are very similar to the ones that you've probably used in the past in freshman lab. However, our microscopes have have four objective lenses on them. So normally in the freshman lab you're only going to be using three and ours have a fourth one um, that's one that you maybe have never used before unless you've had another micro class. Um, so like I said our microscopes have an ocular lens and they have an objective lens and um, and then they have the well they have four different objective lenses. So uh, since they're a compound microscope, we have to be able to get the total magnification because our microscopes are magnifying things and they're resolving things. So we have a total magnification equation and we have a resolving power equation. So the first equation we're going to go over is the total magnification equation. And so since they're compound, we have two lenses. We have to take both of those lenses into account whenever we are getting the total magnification. So total magnification is very easy, it's very straightforward. It is simply the ocular lens multiplied by the objective lens. Um, so the ocular lens on our microscopes are at a constant 10x magnification. And then we have our four different objective lenses. So depending on which objective lens you're asked about or depending on which objective lens you're on, that's going to change the total magnification. So for example, if you have, if you are on the 10x objective lens, that's also known as low power, you would do 10 times 10, which would give you 100x. So the total magnification at the 10x objective lens would be 100x magnification. So the only thing you really need to remember about that one is that the ocular lens is at a constant 10x. So if you can remember that, you simply multiply whatever objective lens you're on by 10, and that's going to give you the total magnification. Now, like I said, our microscopes are not only magnifying, but they're also resolving. So we have to look at the resolution of each objective lens and what resolution is is that it's the microscopes or the objective lenses ability to discern between fine detail so what that means is that just because we make something larger doesn't mean that it's in focus and that we can see each individual detail and that's really important for us when we're looking at bacteria because most of them are going to be about a micrometer large uh, they range anywhere from a half a micrometer to five micrometers. That's the normal range. There are some that are a little larger than that. But the majority of them are going to be very, very tiny. Okay, um, We can't see them with the naked eye. So if we magnify them, that's all great. But if we can't see each individual cell, then we can't tell the shape, the arrangement. And those are really important things whenever we're trying to identify bacteria. So that's why the resolution is so important. Now, the resolving power equation is one that you maybe have not seen before. That is the wavelength of visible light divided by 2 times the numerical aperture. Now, you will need to remember this equation. I promise you, you're going to see it probably on your weekly quiz, and you're definitely going to see it on the midterm. So you need to make sure that you highlight this, circle this in your notes, or in the lab manual, because it is in the lab manual, so that you can remember this. Wavelength of visible light divided by 2 times the numerical aperture. Now, I'm going to give you the wavelength of visible light, and I'm going to give you the numerical aperture. So all you have to do is plug these numbers in. So, for example, if I ask you what's the, the resolving power of the 100x objective lens, okay? So... 
That has nothing to do with magnification. So you're not going to use magnification anywhere in this. So the wavelength of visible light is around 500 to 550 nanometers. So I'll tell you which number to use. So if you use 500 nanometers, you'll put that at the top, then divided by two times the numerical aperture. Each objective lens has a different numerical aperture. So that's already calculated for you and it is stamped on the side of each objective lens. So this is basically the lens's ability to gather light. Um, so the more light that it can gather, the better the resolving power is going to be. So the numerical aperture of the 100x objective lens is 1.25. So you would plug that into uh, the bottom of your equation. So you put 500 nanometers divided by 2 times the numerical aperture, okay? And that's going to give you 200 nanometers because the wavelength of visible light is in nanometers. Now, um, we don't really like to use nanometers as a unit because we're going to be dealing with micrometers whenever we're dealing with bacteria. So we're going to move that decimal over three times to the left and uh, to put it into micrometers. And so the resolving power of the 100x objective lens on our microscopes is 0 0.2 micrometers. So what does that mean? That means that our microscopes can clearly see something that is 0 0.2 micrometers large. Well, I just told you that most of the bacteria that we're going to be dealing with in here is about a micrometer large, one whole micrometer. So if our 100x objective lens can see 0 0.2 micrometers, then our 100x objective lens, we are going to be able to clearly see each individual bacterial cell in this class. So that's a good thing. Okay, so as a review, make sure that you know that total magnification equation. Make sure that you know that resolving power equation. So now we're going to go over and we're going to look at our microscopes and go over the parts of the microscope. All right, so now we are over here with our microscopes. So we're in a different part of the lab. And we are going to go over briefly the parts of the microscope. And then I'm just going to kind of touch on a little bit um, on how to focus the microscope properly. Because I know some of you, the last time you saw that was in freshman lab. So it's been a little while since you used a microscope. And these are a little bit different. So we're going to go over that briefly also. So these are our compound light microscopes. And these are some newer microscopes. So they're nice and pretty. Okay? And... Um, so starting out at the top now, you do have a uh, diagram of a microscope in your lab manual. The picture is of an older microscope, so it's going to look physically a little different than this, but the parts are all in the same places, and the parts are doing the same thing. So you might want to mark that page or highlight that page because you will need to know the parts of the microscope and what those parts are important for doing um, for your midterm and then for your weekly quiz too. Um, so you might want to uh, brush up on your, your parts of your microscope. Um, so we're going to start at the top and work our way down. So first we have our ocular lenses, okay, which are these. And this microscope is binocular. So that means that there are two um, ocular lenses. Okay, so... Um, usually it's a lot easier to use. And then these move, okay, based on the width of your eyes. So if you were actually in the lab, you would simply look through and you would move these until you only see one circle, okay? You only want to see one circle in the center. If you only see one on either side, one's going to be in focus and one's not. So you want to see one circle in the center, okay? This is the binocular tube. This is where the ocular lenses are held to, and this does swivel. So right now we have it swivel towards the back of the microscope, but if I was wanting to use the microscope, I could simply loosen this little screw here and swivel it and then tighten the screw back. Now, the microscope works the other way too. So um, it doesn't really matter if you move it to the front or move it to the back. It's whatever is most comfortable for you. But to store them in our cabinet, we do have to swivel them back so that um, it'll fit into the um, cabinet. Okay. And here's the arm, our arm. Okay. Here's all of our objective lenses. So like I said, we have four objective lenses on these microscopes. So here's our 4X. That's our scanning microscope. I mean, a scanning objective lens, 
that's the one that you're supposed to start on, start with. Next is your 10x objective lens. That is our low power. Then we have our 40x objective lens. That's high power. And then we have the 100x objective lens. And this is the lens that you probably haven't used before unless you have uh, been in some micro lab before. The ones in the freshman labs only go up to 40x. This does not have a, a good enough uh, resolving power for us to be able to see our bacteria. So we need to move up to the 100x objective lens. Um, another word for the 100x objective lens is the oil immersion lens. And we'll talk about why that's special whenever we start uh, practicing focusing the microscope. So those are my objective lens. They're attached to the revolving nose piece. That's this little dial here. It's important that you use this to turn the objective lenses and not touching the objective lenses themselves because they do come off, so we want to be careful. Okay. Then we have our stage. We have our stage clips. That's where the uh, slides actually go. We have our stage adjustment knob. That moves the stage up and down side to side, so that's going to move your slide around for you so you can find a good place on your smear. The condenser is up underneath here. Okay, that helps to focus the light that's coming in. And then you have your iris diaphragm that's in the front here. Okay, This is going to help focus... Um, or eliminate the amount of light that you are getting. So if your, your smear looks washed out, you could um, shut this, okay? And um, like if you're on the 4X and it's looking really bright, you shut it and it'll help eliminate some of that light. But we always usually like to have ours all the way open at 100X. Um, but you can change it if you needed to. Here's my light source down here. This is the light intensity knob. Okay, so uh, these are LED, uh, these have LED bulbs in them and they are very, very bright white bulbs. So if this was too intense, uh, the light was too intense, you could turn this down. Here's my on and off switch. And then here are quite potentially the most important knobs on the microscope. My coarse, which is the large knob, and the fine adjustment. Okay, coarse adjustment and fine adjustment. The coarse moves the stage up and down in large increments, and the fine moves it up and down in small increments. The only time that you need to touch the coarse adjustment is when you are only 4x objective lens. Because your slide is glass, these objective lenses are glass. So if you are moving it up and down in large increments and you're on this 100x objective lens, you could potentially crack the lens or your slide. So we always want to be very careful whenever we're doing that. Okay, um, And then your base is down here. Okay, So that's basically all the parts of the microscope that you're ever going to need to know. Okay, And um, the plug-in is on the back. So if you were here using this, you would simply plug the microscope up. Turn it on, okay, and you see the light that has turned on. Okay, I can turn up the light and you can see it a little better. Um, so whenever I focus a microscope, if you use these same tools every single time you focus a microscope, then um, you should not have any problem um, focusing a microscope if you use these same steps every single time. So I start out by adjusting my eyepieces to make sure that I have ni one nice circle in the center. Then I would put my slide, adjust my uh, stage clips to where I have the light coming right over the center of the smear. And then I start adjusting. Notice I'm on the 4X objective lens and I'm going to start by lifting the stage all the way until I start to see color. Okay, because when we're doing our stains, we're going to be doing colored stains. So you would lift until you start to see color. Then you would use the fine to get it into sharp focus. Now, these microscopes are what we call par focal. So that means that once I've got it focused at the 4X, I should not have to touch the course again. So I'm going to move on to the 10X objective lens. Now, I'm, it's going to be a little out of focus, so I'm going to need to touch my fine just a little bit. Now, some microscopes you need to go forward, some you need to go back. All microscopes are a little bit different. 
Then I'm going to move on to my 40X, and you're going to notice that these lenses are starting to get really close to the slide. That's how it's supposed to be. So again, I'll touch my fine. Now the 40X is going to be blurry, but it's okay. We're going to get it as close as we can. Then I move on to my 100X objective lens. Now, remember I said that this lens was a one, was a um, oil immersion lens. So what that means is that I have to add immersion oil to the slide before I can get anything focused on this 100X objective lens. So if I actually had a slide on here, I would take my immersion oil, which is, it looks like oil. I would put a dot right where the light is coming over the slide, put it directly on your smear. Then I would move back to my 100X objective lens. Touch the fine to get it into sharp focus, and then you should be able to see your bacteria. You have to use oil on the oil immersion lens for to get that really good resolving power that we were talking about earlier. Remember we talked about the resolving power equation and how that 100X has that 0.2 micrometers um, of resolving power? You have to add the oil to be able to get that. So if you were in the lab actually using the microscopes, that would be the last step that you would do before you're able to see your bacteria at the 100X. Once you get down to the 100X, you can see the individual bacteria. That way you can see the size of the bacteria, the shape of the bacteria, and the arrangement. And then if you were doing other stains, you could see other things on top of those things. Um, so that's the microscope. Uh, that's the parts, the rundown of the different equations, and um, a quick little tutorial on how to focus the microscope.